Your job as a computer engineer is to figure out how to get electrons that you cannot see, feel, or touch to perform calculations and other tasks that you want them to perform. Obviously, we cannot manipulate the electrons directly, so we use a series of tools to transform the task that we want to execute into devices that will manipulate the electrons on our behalf. In most modern computers, we manipulate electrons at devices called transistors that allow us to interpret the energy level of electrons as ones and zeros. We connect these transistors in networks called logic gates that allow us to perform basic calculations such as AND or NOT on these ones and zeros. We can then arrange these logic gates to perform slightly more complicated operations such as addition or selecting streams of information. We can combine these larger components to create microarchitectures the specification for how to implement a processor in hardware. The overall behavior of a microarchitecture is then described by an instruction set architecture, which tells programmers what instructions a computer processor can perform. Programmers then write computer programs for these instruction set architectures. These programs can be described by their algorithms. And algorithms are written so we know how to perform a task on a computer. Every task that we execute on a computer can be implemented by transforming the problem through these different layers of abstraction. Now I know that probably went by a little too fast, so let's slow down and look at these ideas more closely in the opposite direction. Now suppose that your teacher directs you to use a computer to determine how you should move a knight around a chessboard so that it touches every square on the board while using only legal chess moves. How do you approach this problem with the computer? Well, first, we would need to transform the task into an algorithm. Now, an algorithm is a series of con computational steps and decisions that we need to perform to complete the task. Computational steps are represented by rectangles, and decisions are represented by diamonds. So to move the knight around the board, we first need to determine how many ways the knight can get to each spot on the board, and then we need to choose a starting spot for the knight. Once the knight is on a spot, we set that spot's value to zero so we know that we can no longer go to that spot. Simple enough. And then we need to identify the spots that the knight can move to and move the knight to the next best spot. Finally, we need to determine whether we have successfully touched every spot on the board. If we haven't, then we keep cycling through the algorithm until we complete the task. There are always many algorithms that we can create to perform a task. This is just one algorithm for the knight's tour, as it's called, so you will need to learn how to weigh the strengths and weaknesses of each algorithm. We can then transform our algorithm, written in human language, into a computer program. Transforming one step of an algorithm may require many commands in a computer's language. High-level programming languages such as C or Java allow the programmer to write programs for computers without knowing which processor is going to be used. The next transformation translates these processor-independent programs into processor-dependent programs. Programs written in a system's instruction set architecture. We perform this transformation by compiling the code into a set of assembly commands that are allowed by the instruction set architecture. This assembly code is then translated by an assembler into the ones and zeros that will be stored in the memory of the computer to manipulate the state of that computer. Transforming a single line of C code may take several lines of machine code to implement. The complexity of the machine code is one reason we use programming languages like C to help us manipulate the computer's behavior. Each instruction set architecture can be implemented by connecting small hardware components together to create a microarchitecture. Just like there are many types of processors that a computer can use, each instruction set architecture can be implemented with a number of different microarchitectures. Again, like transforming a program into machine code, 
Executing a single instruction of an ISA may require several steps of sending information around the processor. The steps to execute an instruction set architecture command on the microarchitecture are actually called microprograms. Every component of the microarchitecture can be implemented with a set of logic gates. For example, the two circuits on the right both could be used to implement a component that adds three bits of information together. The final transformation is to implement these logic gates with transistors so that we can manipulate the electrons. You don't need to understand all of this right now, but we hope that by the end of this class, you will understand a little bit about each of these transformations and we'll be able to see computers from this broad systems perspective. We believe that this systems perspective will enable you to better tackle the emerging challenges in computing, and perhaps even challenge the way we currently build computers.